Pension Inspection presents Going Ultra. This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Welcome to Going Ultra. Visit mjmunoz.com slash gu for notes and links, and don't forget to subscribe. Like, share, and comment to help me grow. All right, so I'm ready to talk about Going Ult, not Going Ultra, <laughs> Ultraman Z episode 10. Here comes the Space Pirate. Originally aired August 12th, 2020. The writer is Satoshi Suzuki, and the director is Kazuhiro Nakagawa. The special skill director is Katsuro Onoe, who I believe was the special skill director from the previous episode as well. So I have a question. Well, I actually, I'm going to start with the splinters. So there wasn't really much for me to gripe about in this episode. I could uh, talk about Yoko beating... Haruki in an arm wrestling match, but uh, I'm not sure his arms are much bigger than hers, so, <laughs> so maybe that's okay. And uh, that's probably the strongest complaint I have about the episode. So that was my my, my splinters section of the episode. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the, uh, the spectacular stuff in it, which was a lot of it, actually. Um, I really loved how creepy Alien Barossa was. For some reason, I thought it was Barbosa. Um because it's a pirate, I guess. <laughs> um, but Barossa uh, makes a little more sense, uh, a little more alien, a little more unique. So that was good. But yeah, so this is Alien Barossa going after his King Joe robot and uh, his combining robot. And uh, it was really, really interesting to watch. I loved the uh, the the design of Alien Barossa. Uh, I loved how creepy the uh, the infiltration of the HQ was, and and actually I want to address something from last episode. I asked, you know, what's this alien hand? What's going on with it? I still don't understand if he was piloting it directly or what, but it's now clear to me the fact that he had uh, his hand on Yoko and he was controlling her, and then on that um, the other guy uh, in the beginning of the episode he was controlling him, and then, duh, I noticed this. Uh, they show fingers of an alien and they say like, yeah, that's an alien that we think is controlling this guy because it was speaking through one of the professors, right? So, yeah, that Barossa was there the whole time. I suppose he was there because he had ultra metals. He was there, tra you know, tracing the you know other ultra metals that you know all the ones that Haruki has presumably, and uh, I guess that's what it was all about. I didn't think. I mean, I, we know he was after them, but I guess he came to Earth because of that. So I, I don't know. I feel a little dumb, um, like you know, wondering why is why is it here? But I guess it's it. They didn't hit you over the head with it. I guess. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think it was like, it, they didn't hold your hand about it and say like, this is why Alien Bros is here, even though they kind of, they talked about it, they made it clear what his motivations were. I guess just because we didn't really see him and it was just King Joe and it was this, you know, robot, this, you know, four-piece robot that I was kind of uh, um, awed by, I guess, in a way, um, that I didn't really think about it too hard. But yeah, definitely in this, watching him actively try to get his, uh, his machine back and, um, or get King Joe back, and, uh, you know, the infiltration of the base and everything, it, it really made it click for me, and it made sense, and I really liked it. I love the design of, of uh, Alien Barossa, or Space Pirate Barossa. It's like an evil moth. Wait, is that a... I'm not being redundant. Uh, it was like an evil moth um, guy, and it was super cool. <laughs> I liked all the spirals on his design. I like how the spirals on the hand were are used to, like, mesmerize people. That was really cool. He even, he even got Z. Uh, which was dope to see. It was funny though that at the end that his planet, um, it kind of has that spiral design baked into the the surface of the planet, which I think is a little hokey, a little silly. Like you're telling me these guys naturally have these uh, spirals on them, and then their uh, planet also has that. Although maybe, maybe, like those African tribes that would tattoo themselves in different patterns with the like the scarring with the stone or whatever. Uh, maybe their planet has those spirals on it, and they put those spirals on themselves as part of their like, uh, you know, maturation process and a, a ritual uh, going into adulthood or something for the tribe. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think that's a cool idea, but I don't think that's the intention. I think the intention is that that's what their skin or whatever looks like, and uh, and that's what their planet looks like, which, you know, it's fine. It's cute. It's simple. I, I suppose in a, in a world of, uh, of Ultraman where you've got, like, hundreds of aliens, then there's only so much energy you can put into developing each culture to be unique, right? Anyway. So, uh, the fights were really cool. I thought, um, whatever, Mr. Phantasmagoria, uh, they just really your figure arts for him. I can't remember the name. Anyway, this, this current form of Z, um, the mystical form, whatever, uh, it came off really well in the fight. 
The fight was uh, very engaging, very dynamic. Um, all very, very good stuff. Let me see where I'm at. Okay, yeah, I need to start wrapping up. Um, I love the... I love the angles, like, Barossa was creepy, but they also took a real humorous angle with him, like, uh, the fact that he pulled out, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like, nine or ten swords out of his back, and, you know, stuck them all in this pile or whatever in this construction site, like, the, the comedy behind that, it was ludicrous that he kept pulling out these things, and then the fact that he was able to, like, the way he, like, ran over to them and skittered and, like, had, like, a super fast motion on him and stuff, like, it was treated comically, um, but also, like, maybe it's not comical, maybe it's creepy, uh, so there's a little ambiguity there, um, so that was fun. Uh, I really liked, too, Baco, uh, being so clever, um, to, to lure Barossa over, <laughs> this is the final lock switch thing, and then to throw the, you know, liquid down so that he could be electrocuted by Haruki, that was super cool, uh, I love seeing, like, the wisdom and the strength, uh, of this old man, and I really liked, uh, which is something I'm going to get into in a minute, uh, him questioning, you know, like, the excitement that the young guys, the young engineers or maintenance crew had over King Joe and what they can do with it and how they can leverage its power, uh, because it's, it's so fast, it's so durable, it's so, you know, light, it's whatever, it's all these great things, it can be this amazing weapon, and they're all excited about, um, what they can do with it, and he's thinking more slowly, more carefully, and wondering what kind of dangers it'll present, and if, you know, people are ready to handle this, so, like I said, I think it's very cool, uh, but also just him getting that, that, <laughs> uh, that opportunity to, to zap Barossa was super cool, and then, uh, I don't know, Juggler popping up, that was interesting, um, now Yuka has met him, and she wants to dissect him, she's uh, in awe of him and whatnot, kind of weird, uh, being that aliens are treated as, like, sentient beings and everything, it's kind of weird that she wants to dissect him, um, I could see her wanting to, like, know them and study them and whatnot, uh, like the alien girls in the last episode, right, she was interested in them, the alien pits, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. It's a little weird she wants to dissect him. It'd be like if you loved cute animals and you, you wanted to cut them up. Um, that's almost what it feels like. I get her being excited about, like, oh, this is a horn or this is a tooth of that one or whatever. And I'm, like, I'm going to collect this and, you know, keep it for my collection. But, uh, yeah. One dissect juggler. That's a little weird. <laughs> um, and I loved his reaction at the end of the episode. And I love that humor that was in it. But, um, you know, it was, it's funny. There was all that humor, but there was also some, you know, pretty serious stuff two going on, and a very creepy vibe from Barossa, so that was, that was exciting. I liked the, the Z Barossa fight in the, the hallway down where the pipes are and stuff, that was really cool to see. Um, it feels funny to me, though, that it, it looks like, uh, Haruki is uncomfortable with his body being taken control of, uh, in that, as it, when he transforms, uh, into that other form, um, which is kind of cool, but it's also kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how I like it so much, but it's interesting, at least. Uh, last thing I want to say, uh, I really liked the, uh, the new attack, the big sword, with the, uh, Father Ultra and Zafi and whoever the other Ultra, oh, Ultra and Ace, um, that was really cool with the, uh, the Z Slasher, or Z, Z Riser? Anyway, super cool, I liked that, big, big light, big sword made out of light, you're always gonna get me with that, and the scene where it popped up was super cool, I love how he's, he's turned away from the camera and it, like, materializes, super dope, it went really quick, and I almost wonder if they, like, filmed it a certain way and then they manipulated it like edited it to uh, to zoom in a certain way because it like tracked the blade going up and then it tracked back behind him and then he spins around and like I had to work a little hard to grab that exact moment um where well that you'll see if you're looking at the image of the show post where it looks really cool <laughs> and then he slashes it Barossa so um yeah but uh but Baco Baco is super cool I like this old man hanging out and I like the question he raises which is is humanity ready for this technology and uh he raises a uh question of, of human greed, and the episode, uh, the post, uh, or the, whatever, the thumbnail, it has greed knows no bounds on it, but the line is actually from Baco, he says, humanity's greed knows no bounds, and he's really concerned about that, and Yuka, um, you know, she's younger, and she says, like, hey, Baco, you know, we weren't necessarily ready for the steam engine, or for this, or whatever, but, like, we've flourished, humanity has flourished, and I agree, humanity has flourished, possibly in spite of a lot of things, and, uh, humanity is, adapts and, you know, changes and, uh, overcomes, uh, for the most part, or at least a select group of humanity does and everybody else kind of, uh, follows in their wake as they see, hey, this is, an, there's an easier, better way to do things and we'll do this. Um, but I do think Baco's concern is legitimate and I like that it's being, that that question is being raised and in the preview I see for the next episode, spoilers for episode, uh, 11 of Ultraman Z, if you haven't seen it yet and if you haven't watched the trailer, uh, they're going to use, they're going to leverage the power of King Joe, um, and 
I'm concerned that they won't. <laughs> Uh, like, I like the fact that, that Baco got to present this perspective of how quickly should we, you know, jump on this new technology and use it. And is that a reflection of human greed or is it a, a reflection of, like, the necessities of the mother of invention? We need to defend humanity from, you know, further alien attacks so we're going to leverage every tool that we have. Um, is it, you know, is it being out of that? Is it being done out of that? Or is it being done out of some other place? And if it's doing being done from some other place other than we just want to protect people with this power and this technology and this ability, then maybe it's bad. And even if you do something with the right intentions and with the right heart, it could still turn out bad because you don't necessarily understand it. And maybe he just wants to fully understand the technology before they use it. Um, you, would, you wouldn't want to rush a cure for something and then have it turn out to be worse than, than the disease, right? Baco's old enough and wise enough to know that. So... Uh, I don't know. I really find that perspective fresh and interesting and exciting. Uh, but like I said, I, I feel like it's going to be taken away and, um, maybe it's the seed is being planted here and it'll sprout later and develop later more in, in the rest of the episode, um, or the rest of the series. So we'll see how that goes. But I thought it was a very provocative question. I thought it was very interesting and I liked how it wasn't dismissed. He wasn't dismissed, but it was brought up uh, an interesting counterpoint by Yuka. And I, I hope he's still got like some misgivings like, hey, we've looked this thing over. It's as good as it can be. Um, we're pretty sure this is how it works and whatever. Uh, I'm still cautiously optimistic or I'm still cautious that there could be problems and consequences from this that we haven't foreseen. So let's be careful, folks. Um, that's what I advise with my experience. I'd love to see that perspective maintained and, and held on to. Um, but we'll see if it happens. But again, great question to be brought up. Um, I want to see it explored more and it just got the chance to be brought up here. So, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm rattling on and on. So I'll stop now. Anyway, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, go ahead and sit, check out mjwinners.com slash GU for the rest of my going ultra coverage. I'm also covering SSSSS.Dinazion over there. I'll be talking about Dinazion. Well, when this is out, I will have been working on, well, when this is out and you're hearing it, watching it, whatever on Odyssey or over, uh, through the podcast, uh, any of the podcasting platforms it's on or, or directly through mgmoonish.com slash gu. Uh, I will be working on Dinazion and then it should be out within a day of that, if not the same day. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, go ahead and check that out. Um, also, I'm working on a children's book inspired by Ultraman, uh, basically Tokusatsu generally, kind of Ultraman specifically, um, in some ways. It, it's inspired, but it's not an homage. It's not a ripoff. Nobody turns into an Ultra. Um, but there's shades of ultra stuff and, and, and kaiju type things in there. Uh, maybe more monsters than kaiju, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, but anyway, I'm working on that. It's called Ava and the Grow Bug or Ava and the Glow Bug. It should be Glow Bug. That's, that's the point. Um, well, that's the, the distinguishing characteristic of the character. So you can look at, over on mgmoonish.com for Ava and the Glow Bug or just Ava or Glow Bug, and you should be able to find uh, my post for that as I'm developing, brainstorming, um, what's it called? I'm making a, a first rough draft. I have the first rough draft. I need to finish it. It's incomplete. Uh, I have my outline over there too, so you can kind of see what's going to happen in the story and check that out. And I'm also, after I finish that, uh, after I finish that manuscript, I'll be working on getting it illustrated uh, by somebody and then I'll, I'll shop it around to publishers or self-publish it myself. We'll see what happens. And then after that, I have a uh, Tokusatsu inspired comic uh, that I'm working on. The script is possibly in the show notes for this episode, possibly not. Um, but uh, I had a script for a, like a one like floppy 22 page comic. And I decided I want to expand it and make it a, I don't know, like a hundred pages for a graphic novel. So anyway, that's, that's in the works. You can check all that stuff out there. And, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remind you that you know that you don't need to shout henshin to be a hero. I'm gonna leave you with peace and blessings. This is MJ signing off. <laughs>